Welcome back, everyone. Uh, today, and what we're going to be talking about is something called an SSL. So it stands for Secure Socket Layer. And in keeping with last week's uh, theme, when we were talking a lot about uh, login and security and uh, authentication versus authorization, uh, this is kind of the next next evolution in what, what this uh, conversation is about. And uh, if you if you start to look now, you you may may have noticed it may not have noticed it over the last uh, little while but oftentimes what you get on a website these days is you'll you'll see things that are uh, slightly different than you're accustomed to so used to be that this used to be just https okay and or sorry just http but now we've got this little s on the end and that's for our security Okay, and what I've done is I've actually called this up in um, two different sort of browsers. This one here is uh, Chrome. And you don't see that the HTTP is shown there. But when I look over at, uh, what's this one here? This browser is, um, that's the new Microsoft browser. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. But it does actually show the HTTPS. And you see this little uh, lock that's just to the left of it. So you can click on that and get some information about this, okay? And right here you're seeing uh, their certificate. So this certificate has been uh, validated and it says who issued the certificate and to what level and what the uh, valid from and to is. Okay, and uh, you can get this issue statement. You can go to here and you get this whole website called Secure Trust, and uh, yeah, you can you can see a whole bunch of different products. But these guys pri pri primarily deal with your SSL, okay? So your Secure Socket Layer Certificate, and I can do the same thing here with, say, for example, Home Depot. If I go over back to Chrome and I click on this, and I can go to my uh, validation as well. And this one is from Entrust Certificate Authority. Uh, there's the date, and this is for Home Depot. So when I look at the issuer, uh, and I'll close that, you're getting, uh, this one is from Entrust. So Home Depot is using, they're buying their uh, SSL from Entrust. Okay, so let me close some of these things down. And there's this really good article that talks about uh, the ultimate guide to HTTPS and SSL for WordPress. It was written in 2018, but it's still good. Okay, and the reason I'm showing this is just because it's got useful information in there. Uh, it says, what's HTTPS? Okay, and which, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. That's what the S is for. But then when we get down to what is SSL, SSL is a protocol used by applications to communicate secure, securely across the network. Okay, so this is really talking about uh, security. Now, what happens if I, I have a website that uh, doesn't have credit card payment functionality or it doesn't take data or information from my users? It's just a plain static website, okay? you should still have an SSL. And the reason you should have this SSL is uh, is twofold. Okay, one, you know, a great example is maybe a blog. Okay, a blog doesn't take any information from people, but it is, um, you know, it, its value is derived by the number of people that it can reach. But you should still have an SSL. And the reason is, is that under the kind of uh, construct of SEO, um, you are trying to get your uh, website ranked by Google. And SEO is search engine optimization. So what it means is uh, when I go to, let's say, for example, I'll go here and you see this Google search right here. If I type in anything like, um, uh, I'm just guessing, dog breed, uh, dog breeders, um, Dog breeds, let's just go to dog breeds. You see the very first ad that came up or the very first URL, 
This is what a lot of people are vying for to get to the very top, to be the very first person uh, to claim the top position in a search engine. And you look at this Google here, everybody thereafter is in a lower ranking. So the point I'm trying to make is that if you don't have an SSL, uh, then what it basically means is you're not going to get uh, put forward by Google or other search engines to be properly ranked. So you can see here, this one, the first one that I clicked has a valid certificate. Okay. So without that certificate, you're not, you, you probably don't stand a chance at all in getting ranked at the top in a Google search. Okay. So, um, that's that's the first reason um the second reason is that a browser a web browser does prefer an ssl over a non-ssl website so you may not even make it onto the list okay and it depends on the different browsers what their internal rules are going to be but uh if you've got the ssl you have a much better chance of people seeing your actual website than those that don't have an actual SSL on their website. Okay. So, you know, uh, how do you go about getting this, uh, this SSL? And I think the, the unfortunate thing is, uh, you actually have to go and buy them and I'll, I'll get rid of this home Depot thing in right here, but you, you actually have to go and buy it. And there's a couple of different places, right? So you can get an SSL certificate, um, from GoDaddy. You can get one from, uh, Namecheap as well and you can see the different pricing that are in here for your ssl now what happens is you have to buy an ssl certificate you have to download it and then go over to whoever is hosting your website and then actually request that they put this the ssl certificate onto your website for you okay so um you have to get them to generate a certificate request and then upload your certificate that you have purchased from somewhere um, to actually get it to work on your specific website. Now, the bad news is if you relocate your uh, website to a different host, you'll have to purchase a new certificate. So they're not portable. You can't take it from one to the other. So that's, that's the bad news. The good news is, you know, they're relatively affordable. This positive SSL one here is, uh, $4 and 88 cents a year. Okay. Which is probably us dollars. Uh, and then they have varying degrees of, of, uh, security and complexity premium SSL wildcard. Okay. So that's $120 a year. Uh, this one here is 122. That's the most expensive one on there that I'm looking at. And this, uh, GoDaddy is, uh, looks like, a, uh, you know, what are these $16, $33 per year Canadian. Okay. So they're reasonably priced. Uh, but they do, they're almost a mandatory. That's almost a must. If you're doing anything online where you are trying to make a living with a website, these are pretty much a must. You got to have them. Okay. So the big takeaway is, um, you have to purchase one from somebody and then you have to give it to your, your website host and ask them to make that connection for you, uh, in order to, to have that secured part. Okay. So you want to be able to have a valid certificate on your particular website. It's, it's almost a must. Okay. If you look at mine right now, um, look at what mine says certificate valid. Okay. I don't have one. I haven't purchased one for mine and it's issued by my local host. So I don't have a certificate on there. Okay. And, uh, the date is basically from May 11th to May 10th or sorry, I don't know what that is. Um, that doesn't make sense, but anyway, I don't have a certificate on my website. What I have done though, is I've gone into my Azure and I've, I've started it on my server and I've gone over to my URL and turned it on. And so this one here is on my local host, but this version of my website right now is on, uh, my Azure website. Okay. So when I do go over and I click on, uh, the, the security setting and I click my security or my certificate information, um, you do get some more information about the fact that I'm, 
uh, temporarily um, being secure. And you can see issued by Microsoft IT TLS CA5. Okay, and it's issued to azurewebsites.net. It's not issued to me yet. It's issued to azurewebsites.net. Okay, and it's valid from 2019 to 2021. Okay, so when I'm at a point where I want to host this live, I have to go and purchase that certificate and then upload it to whoever I'm hosting with. Okay, so that's that's a big piece uh, that I wanted to get out of the way up front today uh, with regard to additional security and additional tools that you need to do web hosting. Okay, so um, we've talked a lot about SSL and how it impacts SEO. The next thing I want to just bring to your attention, we're not going to spend too much time on it, but it is really important. And uh, it's this organization here. It's OWASP. Okay. It's the Open Web Application Security Project. Okay. And it's a nonprofit foundation that works to improve the security of software. Okay. And if you're in the web security domain, um, or you're developing websites, these guys are a great resource of information for you in terms of just overall web security. Okay. And there's a, a good article in here, uh, their projects. So if you go to the projects tab and there's different chapters, if you want to join and events and stuff like that, this is really the, uh, the hackers background or uh, playground, I should say. So if you go to projects, so O W A S P top 10. And what this, what this article talks about is the top 10 web application security risks. Okay. So injection, broken authentication, something that we talked about in the last video is authentication. Okay. And there is uh, a lot of great information in here. Okay. And especially this injection, um, really, really important stuff. So I'm, I'm showing you this not because, uh, I'm going to try to inject an entire master's degree in, uh, web security into you in a, in a tiny little video, but to make you aware of it because it's important and you should know that it exists and you should be able to go there and, and read through this and, and find really great information about vulnerabilities and attacks and stuff like that to your website. Okay. So, um, I, I strongly encourage you to get in and start looking through this site. Okay. So we're, the last one was injection. And I think this one is broken authentication. Okay. And it's broken down into a chart of, uh, threats, agents, attack vectors, all sorts of great information that you can, you can draw upon. Okay. So please, if, if you've got the time, get in and start looking through this and start reading through it. Okay. Really, really important stuff. Okay. So I'll close that out because the, the real focus of, of this particular video I want to get into is, um, uh, social login kind of stuff. Okay. So what I'm talking about is getting in through your Microsoft account or your Google account or through logging in with your Facebook account, that kind of stuff, because more and more you're seeing, um, when you go to websites and you are opting in to provide your, uh, a, a login to a new website, you do have the option now to do social authentication through these various sites that I've already mentioned. So what this means for us, uh, tonight is, or sorry, I keep saying tonight. I don't know why, uh, it is tonight for me while I'm recording this, but who knows when you're going to watch this. Uh, but what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to focus on this section here. It says use another service to log in. Okay, so what I'd like to do is actually take some time and implement the uh, a Google button to log in through my Google account versus logging in through uh, any other type of a user account. Okay, so that's what we're going to focus on in this for the rest of this video is actually enabling that functionality into our website. Okay, and I just happen to be, I've chosen um, Google um, because I... I don't even use Facebook. Okay. I'm almost off social media entirely, but I still do have a, uh, a Google account. There are several steps that we're going to have to follow to, to go ahead and do this. Uh, but I wanted to 
sort of show you this website, this, um, or customizing ASP.NET authentication with identity, because down here, there's a, there's a pretty good video here called customizing ASP.NET authentication with identity, OAuth and social providers. So that's one resource that you have at your disposal to, to, uh, try to set up what we're going to do. Now, the second thing is there are a lot of steps, but uh, what I've what I'm doing is I'm going to this uh, right here, this console developers, Google dot com. OK, and if you're following along in uh, in Blackboard uh, or if you have Blackboard, you access to it. It's basically this link right here and it'll get you to uh, this website here. And what's happened is as soon as I got to the website, it actually asked me to immediately log in with my Google account. So I've gone ahead and I've done that. I've put my uh, actual one of my website or sorry, not my website, my um, my Georgian College email address in there because it works as a Google email address. OK, so we what we have to do is uh, several steps and rather than try to explain the steps, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do them and then we'll recap at the end. Okay. Cause there's, there's several things that we have to do. Um, but to keep in mind that we, uh, our ultimate goal is to get this set of, uh, API keys. Okay. And these keys are what we'll use in our apps settings.json file. We've also got a little bit of a uh, little bit of code to do with inside visual studio and there is a NuGet package that we are going to need to um, uh, to get the extension for. And then really towards the end, we have to configure this for both Azure, because we've been doing this in Azure and also locally. But first, we're going to try to do uh, some of the configuration in our apps settings.json and then go over to Azure uh, configuration section. OK, so we, we do have to play both sides of the coin here a little bit, um, but we're going to be able to get it all done in this video. And then at the end, we'll come back and kind of do a recap of all the steps that we followed. OK. There's another good tutorial that you can do online uh, called Facebook, Google and external provider authentication in ASP.NET Core. OK, and this one looks like it was published in January 23rd, 2020. Okay, so this is another online tutorial that uh, you can follow. Okay, and um, it's a pretty good tutorial as well. Okay, but we're going to go through and do all this anyway. Now, the place that I actually got this, um, not this one here, sorry, um, to here is there is there's the URL right there, um, but I actually put it in uh, I put it in Blackboard. Sorry, I'm just trying to find Blackboard. Yep, so I've got it right here. Um, here's the link in my Blackboard. And then uh, this is the tutorial that I just spoke about. Okay, and then there is some more documentation for uh, how to do it with Microsoft and how to do the same thing in Facebook. Okay. Down here, uh, it actually does some, some further discussion about this uh, OAuth. OK, um, so that kind of an, another big picture overview of, of what's happening in there. OK, so um, what I'd like to do is go go. Um, let's go back to not this one here. Sorry to here. That's where I want to be. So while I'm in here, uh, like I said before, I've already logged in using my Georgian account. OK, and yes, I'll agree to the terms and conditions. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to call it my project 12071. Um, I'm going to give it a different name, but it says you have 12 projects remaining in your quota request an increase or delete projects. Okay. But in this case, I'm going to say, um, Georgian groceries. Okay. That's all I'm going to call it. Uh, I don't care that it's spelled wrong. So read this little note here. It says project ID okay, is Georgian groceries. It cannot be changed later. So if I'm going to do this, I'll do the editing right now, but I'm going to leave it. And I'm simply just going to hit the create button. OK, and it's going to do its magic in the background. And you see a whole bunch of stuff comes up on my screen now. OK, 
So you're seeing this uh, create project Georgian groceries just now. Okay, you can see that I'm logged in under my Georgian email account. Okay. And then a whole bunch of other interesting stuff. So you should see at the top right here, right beside uh, Google APIs, you should see the name of your project. So Georgian groceries. Uh, and if not, you can go uh, select the down arrow and look for the project. And I've only got one in here. So that's the one I want. Okay, so you can see that it now I'm inside my dashboard and this project info is the first card that it's showing me, which is project name, Georgian groceries, project ID, and this project number. Okay. Right in the middle of the screen, you can see my cursor. It says go to APIs overview. So right in the middle of the screen, I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to get this note that says you don't have any APIs available to use yet. To get started, click enable APIs and services or go to the API library. My next step is actually to configure the consent screen. And so you can see on the side um, uh, navigation bar here, you see OAuth consent screen. So I'm going to click on that. Okay. Because I want this to be public uh, for any Google account holder, and when I say account, I mean email account holder, uh, to be able to, to use their Google account to log into our site, I need to go to external. Okay, um, so we, we definitely don't want internal. Okay, we're not using an intranet. Okay, we're using an uh, internet. So it's definitely external, okay? And I'm just going to hit the create button. In this particular window, the only thing that we're going to put in there is uh, our application name. So in this case, it'll be Georgian groceries. Okay. That's all I'm going to put in there and I'll, I'll do my best to spell things right. Okay. So just Georgian groceries. That's all I want to put in this particular page here. Okay. I don't want or need anything else uh, on this entire page. And all I'm going to do is go to the bottom and say, save and continue. Sorry, I didn't notice that uh, the user support email was not actually, uh, it wasn't configured in there. And you can see that I'm, I'm actually logged in under here, but I didn't select the dropdown. And the only one that actually appeared was uh, the one that I logged in with. So I do need that in fact. Um, let's see, do I need this thing here? Um, email address, developer contact info. Let's go with this one too. Okay. And we'll do save and continue. And I'm going to move past the next page, save and continue. Optional info. I'm going to do save and continue. And then you see uh, a bunch of different things here. One thing I'd like to take a moment and highlight and uh, really emphasize is there was a step in here that asked us uh, about a logo right in the beginning. And I think it's back here this year, this uh, app logo. So please do not install or put on an, a logo. And it's because uh, Microsoft will ask you for a domain. Um, and we don't own the domain of what's going on right now. Microsoft owns a domain right now, uh, or Google. Uh, so please do not do that. You'll, you'll, you'll cause a lot of errors right now, uh, because it's just trust me on this. Don't put in a logo at this point. So I'll go back to, let's see. Um, can I go any further? Okay. Save and continue and save and continue. So again, I'm, I'm back here and I, I could go back to my dashboard or I can just go to the next step. And the next step for us is actually to go to credentials. So I'm going to click on the credentials and, uh, you can see there's really nothing in there right now, but so I want to create my credentials. So I'll click on, cre uh, create credentials and I want OAuth client ID so that it requests users consent so that your app can access the user's data. So I'm going to click on this. 
So at this point, we're presented with this, uh, this option. Okay. And it's the type and clearly, you know, we're working on a website, so it's web application. Okay. In this form, we're just going to, uh, fill out a couple things and then, uh, you know, we should be get we should get some information that we need as well. So I'll just call this, um, and I'll call this, um, sorry. Uh, and I think I'll go with uh, client one. That's all. Okay, just not even client one, just client. This is a, a two part thing that we have to do. We have to uh, authorize redirect URLs. Okay. And the first part we have to do with this is actually go to our local host. So when I click on this, uh, I need to go to where I'm hosting it. And you'll, you, if I go to home, which you should go to home, but I need my local host URL, um, with a uh, 44350, that's, that's my local host number. So I'm gonna copy that. So I'm now gonna paste that in there and the dash is there and it's gonna be, I have to add the suffix, sign in dash Google. Okay. Now that I've done that, uh, don't navigate away from this page. Okay, so what I need you to do now, if you have, uh, if you've deployed this to Azure, now what you need to do on Azure is to do another add URI. Sorry, I, I might have called that a URL before, but it's an, a URI. So I'm going to hit add, and that's going to be the second one. Okay, so what I've, what I can do is go back into my Azure account, make sure that it's running or stopped. It doesn't really matter. I, I could, I could hit it stop. I've got it open just in case I wanted to get to it, but I could take this, uh, or I could take this particular URL, copy that to my clipboard and then go back into here and very similar. I'm going to copy that or paste that there. And then I'm going to do sign in dash Google. Okay, so when I do that, um, and I'm doing that on the same exact page, it's creating this URI that is is going to give me um, uh, a, a key value pair that I want in my app setting.json. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click uh, create, but um, so I'll go ahead, I hit the create button and hit OK. And now what you see is I've got this client uh, ID. So when I select on that, you're seeing now that I have um, this URI for both scenarios, whether local or live, and I've got a client ID and I've got a client secret. So I need both of those, okay? So now I'm gonna go into my Visual Studio. And I'm going to look for, where is it? Down at the bottom, uh, apps settings.json. So I'm going to open that up. Okay. So in this, uh, allowed hosts, what I'm going to do is right after the quotation, I'm going to do a comma. Okay. And double brackets and it's authentication. Okay, so that's authentication. And then a colon, and then of course the braces. And in here, what it'll be will be Google. Okay, um, go outside, do my colon, and then again, I've got another set of braces. So this is gonna be client ID. Okay, sorry, uh, and I, that should be a capital. So client ID, okay, and quotes, and then a comma, and then this one is gonna be uh, client secret. Okay, and the value is gonna be inside quotes as well. Okay, and it's at the end, so I don't need another uh, uh, 
comma. So clearly the what I need to do is go back into my Google API console and I've got this client ID here and I need this this line right here if I can only just grab it. Okay, so I need to copy that uh, into my client ID between my quotes and then go back and get this client secret. So again, I copy and paste that and drop it in here. So I'm going to save this and save everything. And uh, the next steps we're going to take is to install the, the Google OAuth uh, NuGet package uh, in your package manager, sorry, um, in here. Okay, we'll, we'll do that in a moment. And, and when we actually go to startup, when we start the uh, application, uh, if we modify our startup.cs, uh, what it'll do is we're saying allow the Google authentication um, at the startup of our application, okay? And allow people to uh, log in with that right from the very beginning. That Google authentication is going to run based off of these keys right here. And of course, uh, if we go to our actual uh, login, what will happen is when this is working, then you're not going to see this, uh, this message anymore. You're going to see an actual Google button uh, that'll take you to a login uh, with your Google account. And it's important to understand that it, it presents the user with two options. They may have elected to uh, keep a user account just specifically for this website, or they prefer alternatively to use their Google account to log in. And some people like to do that uh, in order to minimize the number of accounts and passwords that they have to remember. Now that we've actually completed this part in the app settings.json, the next thing that we need to do is actually go to our NuGet solution. Um, and we do, we need to do an installation here. Now I could have gone to the package manager console and done it, but I think the better way to do it is in here. And if, uh, just to recap how to get their tools, NuGet package manager, and then manage NuGet packages for solution. So that's how I got to this page. So in my browse, I need to go and look for the package that I want for this. And while I'm in here, uh, I can look for updates. So you can see that in my solution explorer, I do have a bunch of uh, packages already and I'm getting no indication at all that I need to do any updates. Uh, there's no caution sign on there and there's nothing in my update tab. So that's good. So I, I don't want to uh, go out there looking for things to update, but if I did have updates, uh, inside those packages, they would appear in this tab. And then I would go ahead and update the existing ones that I have, because these here are all the ones that I have currently installed. Uh, and the nice thing is you get an indication when there's an update, but in this case, I want a brand new one. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go looking for it in the browse in the browse. I'm going to look for authentication dot Google. So Okay. And dot Google, see if, uh, see if it'll show up. So what appears is this first one here at the top, this Microsoft ASP net core dot authentication dot Google. And you have to understand it says right here by Microsoft and there's almost 38 million downloads. Okay, so this is version 3.1.9. I want to click on that, but I want to also confirm over here that I'm putting it into my specific project. Okay, and you can see the status really here says uh, installed uh, in mine is set to not installed. And here's the latest version. So I'm going to go ahead and click the install. And I will accept the, uh, the defaults.
And you can see right here that it's actually appearing now inside my packages. Okay. So now you can also see in the installed that uh, it appears here at the top. And again, it's confirmed that we have it. It's right here in our dependencies. Okay, so I'm gonna close that tab. And the next step that we, we have to go to is in our startup.cs. Uh, and that's going to, uh, we're gonna configure that so that on startup, we have this uh, login option available. So this next step is actually, uh, we're gonna do that inside our startup.cs, but just after the the things that we did last video okay so last video we reconfigured our uh, require confirm account so we did this as part of our identity users and we added in this line here this uh, dot add roles identity role so i want to do this right after um this line here actually right after the application db context so right in here and what i want to do is um enable google authentication using the api keys uh, we created in google dev console okay that's what we want to do next so we're gonna do a little bit here it's not too much actually to do but the point that I, I I'd like to highlight is that now that we have this dependency and we go in here we can start uh, we can call a method from there but uh, keep in mind we're in this configure services Okay, so we're going to get a, it's a service we're getting from Google, the service of allowing us to actually uh, use Google to log into our application. So this is gonna be a service, um, services, sorry. Uh, services dot add, and I'm looking for add authentication because that's what we're trying to do here. Sorry, that was a lowercase. Okay, and below this, so this is just um, part of the method. We're gonna do add, and you'll see right here that add Google, okay, is now an option to us. And the reason it's an option to us is it became it came from the, uh, the package dependency over here. Okay, so that's why we have that in there now. And so this is an actual method, and inside we're gonna do option, um, I got to be careful. The IntelliSynth might try and do something undesirable. Okay. And do these braces. Okay. So in here, we're going to call our apps, uh, app setting dot JSON, uh, items that we've already created. Okay. So this will be option dot client. And you can see it pop up here. So this is this client ID, which is over here. Okay, we want the client ID and we're gonna end up getting client secret. Okay, so we're gonna do client ID and this will be uh, configure, sorry, configure configuration dot get section. Okay, and in our brackets and in our quotes, this is going to be authentication. Authentication, and of course you have to spell this properly. Google. Okay, and then go outside of that and we want square brackets. Okay, and that's going to also be in the quotations and that's going to be client ID. Okay, and it's gotta be typed exactly the same as this. So I'm gonna just grab that and highlight it, go back and make sure with a no doubt whatsoever that it's the same. And you can see that I actually spelled the D wrong. Okay, and then the next one we're gonna do is very similar. It's gonna be option, option dot 
client secret. Okay, and this one's going to be configuration dot get section and again author and authentication Google. I suppose I could have copy and pasted that. Okay, and then here again is sorry, it's the wrong brackets. Uh, it's the square brackets quotes and I'm going to go get that right there and highlight that and I will copy that copy and paste that right in here. Okay. And then I'm just missing a semicolon at the end. Okay. So that looks like it should work unless I'm missing a semicolon here as well. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. So when you do this, make sure that it is after this line, this add default identity. Okay. It's, it's a pretty important step. So I just want to highlight a, an issue that I just had. This is incredibly picky. Okay. I had a little space in between the uh, colon and the word Google, and it was throwing a crazy error inside this line. So make sure that, um, you're you know very detailed in this step that this word here should match this word uh this and this match okay it's very picky and there's no spaces or anything like that because if you do that it will in fact throw an error as i just found out anyway let's go and test this so i've got it open in here and if i go and do a uh, login you can see that now i have this google button Okay, if I do a registration, I've got the Google button. So I'm going to try a login. Okay, and I hit the login and it's going to take me to here. So I'll do, um, okay, so it's going to redirect me back to my site and I will do a save on there. And so now because I wasn't registered as a, as a user under this particular login, now, when I select register, now I'm in there and you can see that my name is in there, uh, tom.morazzo at georgiancollege.ca. So now I'm logged in as a regular user. Okay. And I can go to shop here and you'll see that, uh, prior to the video, I went in and I populated a whole bunch of different categories. And of course I don't have anything in there. Okay. So I've got no views or anything like that for those categories. But the good news is I'm actually able to go in and start shopping and I've got all these different categories. Okay. So we're doing really well. I think, uh, if I, um, go to home, you can see I'm still logged in. If I, if I log out, okay. And now I log in, I can try and go to Tom dot. So you notice that I can't log in this way. Okay. I still need to go in and log in with my Google account. Okay. Cause I'm going through the Google API. This is actually for the website itself. So even though I've created that account, I still have to log in through that service. Now, the next thing I want to do is go into my management studio. So just to confirm, I am in my local. So when I go into my uh, server, I'm going to make sure that I'm in my local and I'm going to connect and just give it a moment to look for my databases. So I'm in Georgian groceries and I'll go to my tables and I'm going to go into my user logins. Okay. And you can see it's got this, uh, this header login provider, provider key, provider display name, user ID. Okay. But don't forget, I'm not actually logged in. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to log in and you notice it saved the last time I did this. So if I actually refresh this, so I was expecting when I ran this query to get my, uh, Google as my provider. And I think one of the issues is when I logged in under this, I actually did it with my, uh, I used the cookies or I used the, that save option. So I'm going to log in and I'm going to try something. 
And because I did that, it's actually causing uh, some errors that I don't want it to do. And that's why I put that comment together to make sure that you don't actually save that. So what I've had to do, uh, I had to pause the video and go back and deal with some stuff uh, with this. Because by doing that save, it actually uh, created this uh, undesirable effect. And of course, I restarted my computer to, to try to uh, make some changes. However, what I've had to do is actually go into my Azure. Okay, so um, I went into Azure and I restarted it from Azure and I logged in. And what was great to see was even though I did this registration through my, uh, my local website, it still did per persist my, um, uh, my new Google login when I did that. But what I want to show you is that I did go into my management studio, uh, just like I was a minute ago when I was logged in under uh, a local database and I logged into my Azure database and I went to the tables because this was what I wanted to show you is that when I go and I run that query in the, uh, user logins, uh, you see that I'm logged in my, my login provider is Google, uh, provider key provider display name, which is Google. And then this is my user ID. Okay. So that it does work. Um, I'm, I, what's interesting to me is that, uh, I did do this login under Google through my local. Um, but then when I opened up my actual Azure account, it still persisted somewhere. Uh, and it does register my, um, my login under Google inside my Azure database. Okay. So you're, you're the good thing about that. And that is because when we were in visual studio, we did it in, um, sorry, not in visual studio. I need to go into, into the, uh, Google APIs. Uh, into our console. We did this for both local and for Azure. Okay. So that's why it persisted across both. And don't forget this client ID and this client secret are for both methods of, uh, running this in your URL. Okay. So that's why it persisted. So there is one issue that, um, I, I have to address here and because it's that this information here is probably not in the most secure place that it should be. Okay. So I'm going to want to, um, I'm going to want to address that. So I've just actually, uh, pushed all my changes up to my GitHub repo. And what I'm going to do now is, uh, address this issue here. And in order for me to actually do that, I have to go and push this out to my GitHub repo because don't forget everything that I'm doing is sending it out uh, to GitHub and then GitHub and Azure are connected and they're, they're making updates as we go. So it's important that before I do that next step, I have on Azure, the most up-to-date version of this. Okay. And now that I've pushed it out to, uh, GitHub. The one thing I want to do is I actually want to go back. I, I want to disconnect from this. Uh, I'm going to disconnect from the Azure database. And in fact, um, if I'm in this site, it doesn't allow me to do it. Uh, I want to disconnect from Azure. Uh, I don't have to actually stop it because I'm going to have to come back here anyway. So uh, I'll close this right down. I don't need that for the moment. But when I go to here, I really need to, uh, I guess I'll stop it and just restart it that way because I want to log back into my, uh, local, uh, server. And the reason is we're going to do some stuff in two different sequences. Okay. And first we're going to do it on our local machine and then I'll go back into Azure because there's a couple of steps with Azure that I have to do that I don't have to do if I'm, I'm going to do this work on my local machine. Okay. So let me make sure that I've got that connection going. Yeah, that's connected. Uh, and there it is. And I go to my Georgian. Yep. And let me just check my tables. 
and logins and let's just see now if it's persisting in there okay so it's not showing up in here for some reason i don't really care because i know it works in azure but i do definitely want to go back into here and run this uh, run it from my local machine so as you can see i'm running this from my my local uh my local server local host so i'm going to close that out and my issue now is is this and i'm going to have to go into my um, package manager console okay and i've got to run some commands in here but the first thing i am going to do is go in there and make sure that i'm i'm in the directory that i want so uh if i give myself a little more space yes so i should be seeing everything along here that i'm uh, i'm expecting to see and so i've got to put in a command in here and uh you know we'll go ahead and do that right now so just to confirm just for some uh, reason if you are following along uh, that you are in fact in um, the directory that you need to be okay so in my case you can see here from this drop down um, default project is Georgian groceries and this line right here is the path to where my uh, project is being stored now while I've got the prompt up here what I want to do is initialize the user secret uh, secrets and what this looks like is uh, dot sorry dot net user dash secret okay with an s and in it i n i t okay and i'm going to go ahead and run that and what you can see is uh has already been initialized with user secrets id if you get that that's okay not a problem at all and the next line that i want to run um, sorry, is I'm, I'm actually going to do dot, uh, net users, um, user dash secret with an S secrets set. And this is going to be in quotes. Okay. And it'll be authentication. Uh, in fact, it's, I'm actually taking data from here. So I'll, I'll go with authentication. Okay. And then it'll be uh, colon Google colon this, uh, client ID. Okay. Client ID. And then we're going to set up another set of quotations and this is where I'm going to take this entire number or this word okay and then I'm just simply going to run the command and what you see is a successfully saved authentication Google client ID equals this to the secret store Okay, so uh, hopefully you guess that we have to do this one more time because in that particular case, I only use the client ID. So now what I'm going to have to do is replace this word, this client secret, uh, right here with client ID. And then I need all of this to go inside of these brackets or these quotations. Okay, and I'll run that idea or that uh, secret as well. So now, uh, successfully saved all this to the secret store. Okay. So please understand though that these uh, these keys don't actually appear in Azure. Okay. Uh, I know we've been working on our local, uh, but these are not part of Azure. These are Google. Okay. So. Uh, if I've done this right, technically what I should be able to do is now uh, actually comment this all out. Okay, we'll see if it lets me. And I'll move that over there. Okay, and I'm going to save this and hopefully that it, it doesn't break it too bad. But remember, we were we were trying to use this Google to uh, to log in. 
And so when we actually go to the site, I'll log out. Okay. And I'm, I'm still running this in my local. Okay. Uh, I'm even going to do a, a build solution just to, to triple check. And I'll go back to here. I'll even refresh that just, just so I can. But then when I log in, okay. And I go to Google and I do the Google login. You can see that it saved my login. Okay. Because my, uh, key value pair is now stored in the secret store. Okay. I don't know what the secret store is. I just know that it is the, it's stored now in, it's been saved in the secret store. Okay. So that seems to have worked. I'm really happy about that. Now we have to go and do some further steps to do something very similar, but for our Azure. So because Azure doesn't have a secret key store and it has a very different configuration, uh, now I'm going to have to go and sort of repeat the similar process uh, for Azure. So I'm in my Azure. Uh, I've gone to, uh, you know, home, Georgian groceries. So if you're, if you're wondering when you get in and you've got this dashboard available to you, you want to be in the app service. Okay, so we click on that and we can go down to the deployment center right here on the side and you're seeing this this uh commit history from uh github okay so that's all in there and now the thing that i want to do is i want to go down just below that in settings but i want to go to configuration okay so there's a there's a lot here uh for this configuration so the way I'm going to actually do this is I'm going to, I'm going to select this new application setting and it gives me this window. Okay. And this is going to be, uh, our authentication, Google client ID. So, uh, where was it that we had it before it was in here and it's going to be this piece right here. Okay. And I'll go back in and I'll insert it right here. So that's the first part. And then obviously the second part is getting that big, long, uh, number. And I'll go back and put that in there. Okay. And then I'm just going to hit. Okay. Now we have to do it again for the second piece of this, which was, um, authentication, Google, uh, client secret. Okay, that's there. And then get the actual key. Okay. Done that. And now I'm going to hit okay. And you can see that they're, uh, they're in the table right here. So there's client ID and client secret. So this is Azure's version of the key store. Now, the last thing I did be, uh, after I put those in there is I actually did go to at the top here and I clicked the save button and it asked me to confirm that. So I've actually gone in and I've, I've clicked the save. And now when I go to my overview, okay. And I click on this. Now my site actually, uh, does run off of the Azure. Okay. If you don't hit that, um, if you don't hit that save, uh, that I had previously in the deployment, sorry, in configuration, if you don't hit that, it's unlikely that it's going to, to know. Now, if you're having any trouble with that, uh, you may potentially have to run those commands again. Okay. Which is, uh, starting here this uh, .NET user secrets in it, you may have to do that. Then you may have to run this one again, and then you may have to run this one for a third time. That's after you've done that configuration. Okay. And notice that I still have all this, um, commented out now, don't worry. You don't have to retype it. You just hit the up arrow on your keyboard and you can cycle through those commands again, because you've already done it one time. Okay. The very last thing I want to do is actually log out and then 
log back in, use my Google. Okay, good. Let's log out again, log back in. I don't know if you heard that little uh, sound behind me in the recording, but I said a magic word from my Google Nest Hub and uh, it was listening in. Anyway, uh, what I want to do here now oh, is do, uh, let's do admin and There, log in, and I'm not gonna hit that button again, but you can see here that I'm now logged in under the admin, and I still am in Georgian Groceries. So if I log out, I just wanna do this one more time. I log out, and I do the Google. It puts me back to my Google login account, okay? So uh, ultimately what I can do is I can just go and delete that if I want. I no longer need it in there, but I'm going to leave it in there for, for future reference. Okay. So anyway, the, the steps to this, um, you know, not really too bad in terms of the amount of code that we're doing. Uh, really we had to, uh, add in this part here. I think we added a dependency. Okay. In our, uh, packages, which was this Google, um, authentication.google which allowed us to then um, call some google methods in here for this option and we just called our client id and our client secret okay and then really we dealt with uh our our apps.json in the end or app settings.json but in the end you can see that we we actually don't even need to make that update and so uh, the last last thing that I want to point out to you is that uh, not only that we we did all that but we actually didn't have to change this view okay we actually didn't go in I don't know if you remember but we didn't go in and change this view at all okay this was automatically updated on our behalf we didn't even add the button okay so the Google button was added completely uh, independent of us based on the other actions that we took, it was similar to the way we often do scaffolding. Okay, so it was all taking care of it uh, for us behind the scenes. So anyway, that's all I really wanted to cover in this video, uh, short and sweet, um, but really powerful. And you could probably go in by now, maybe and try this same sort of thing with Facebook. Okay, it's the same sort of uh, steps that you're gonna have to follow. You may have some little nuances, but if you wanna add in Facebook or something, then perhaps just do a little bit of extra independent research. But by and large, it's gonna be the same exact thing. So, and I chose definitely not to do Facebook because I don't have an account, but I do have Google. Anyway, I hope you uh, I hope you got a lot out of that. It's a pretty important thing. Uh, it's powerful to have that skill to understand how to do that. Uh, because there's an expectation that if you are programming this, that you would be able to tap into other people's APIs. And in the future, when we get towards the end of this uh, video series, we will be revisiting the idea of APIs again, because uh, I'm going to show you how to put the Stripe payment gateway into your application. Okay, so uh, that people, if they're purchasing from your site, can make credit card transactions. Okay, so again, we will come back to this uh, app setting.json and do some reconfiguration and grab another API. So anyway, I hope uh, I hope you get through this okay. Um, good luck. I, it's, it's not that bad, um, but it's important to do it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.